again consider a piece of piping, but now with closed ends. We cut the pipe in half to view the inside. The pressure in the piping works on the inner surface, causing a force that pulls the pipe apart in the circumferential direction. This force is counteracted by the material and as a result of this mechanism a hoop stress is present in the pipe wall. However, the pressure also provides a force on the closed ends of our cylindrical geometry. This pressure thrust also tends to pull the pipe apart, which again is counteracted by the material. But now in the axial direction, hence an axial stress is also present. Let's have a closer look at the hoop stress first. The pressure forces on the inner wall have components perpendicular to the plane of our cross section and the total force is balanced by the stress in the material. This stress can be calculated by dividing the force F by the area A. In this case we are evaluating the hoop stress, sigma H. The force F can be calculated by multiplying the pressure load P times the cross-sectional area of the inside of the pipe AP, in which AP is formed by the pipe inner diameter and the length of the pipe piece. The numerator of the equation now becomes the pressure times the inner diameter times the length. The area of the material stress is formed by the pipe thickness T and again the length of the pipe piece. We also have to take into account a factor of 2 for both the top and the bottom. The area of material stress can now be expressed as 2 times the thickness times the length. In our equation we can cross off the length as this is present in both the numerator as the denominator. The equation for the hoop stress becomes the pressure times the inner diameter divided by two times the pipe thickness. A different approach to deducing this equation is to consider the force balance present in our system. On the left side we have the pressure force, so the pressure times the inner area AP. And on the right side we have the forces inside the pipe material, so the material stress sigma H times the cross-sectional area A, which again is two times the thickness times the length. We cross off the length since it is on both sides and we can reorganize the equation to single out the hoop stress. We end up with the same result as before. Commonly the equation is expressed using the outer diameter instead of the inner diameter. This will always give a higher stress value since the outer diameter is by definition larger than the inner diameter. The resulting equation states that the hoop stress in a pressurized piece of piping is roughly equal to the inside pressure times the pipe outer diameter divided by 2 times the thickness. Now let's go back to our pipe section with closed ends and take a closer look at the axial stress. The axial pressure thrust causes a material stress in the axial direction. For this system to be in static equilibrium, both have to be equal. The left side of our equation, so the pressure force, is formed by the pressure value P times the area AP inside the pipe. For this inside area we will consider the full circle based on the inner diameter which is calculated as pi over 4 times the square of the inner diameter. The right side of our equation, so the force inside the material, is equal to the axial stress sigma A times the area capital A, which is the cross-sectional area of the pipe wall. This cross-sectional area is formed by considering the full circle based on the outside diameter minus the full circle based on the inner diameter and is calculated as pi over 4 times the square of the outer diameter minus that of the inner diameter. In this expression for our force balance, we can cross off the factor of pi over 4 since this is present on both sides and we reorganize the equation to single out the axial stress. To simplify this equation, we use the following basic expression stating that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b 
times a minus b. Using this basic expression for the denominator, we end up with the following result. We can now take a closer look at both factors of the denominator, starting with the right one. If we consider the definitions of the inner and outer diameter, we conclude that if we subtract the inner diameter from the outer diameter, we end up with 2 times the wall thickness. Next, we'll consider the left factor of the denominator. Here we use the definition of the mean diameter dm, which is calculated by taking the average of both the outer plus the inner diameter. We can multiply both sides by 2, such that we can substitute this relation into our equation for the axial stress. Both 2's in the denominator multiply to 4, and our equation for the axial stress becomes the pressure times the square of the inner diameter divided by 4 times the mean diameter times the thickness. To further simplify this equation, we state that this relation is always lower than the similar relation in which the mean diameter is replaced by the inner diameter, which is true since using a smaller value in the denominator results in a higher outcome. We can now cross off the square at the top and the inner diameter at the bottom. However, this relation is often expressed using the outer diameter, which provides a conservative approach, since using the outer diameter, which is larger than the inner diameter, will give a larger stress result. We end up with the following two equations for the hoop and axial stress. The hoop stress is expressed as the pressure times the outer diameter divided by 2 times the wall thickness, and the axial stress is expressed by the pressure times the outer diameter divided by 4 times the wall thickness. From these relations we immediately see that the hoop stress is 2 times the value of the axial stress in a pressurized piece of piping. Also, we have to consider that we got to these expressions using simplification steps like replacing the inner diameter with the outer diameter and the mean diameter with the inner diameter in the denominator. Both steps were acceptable since they provided a conservative approach, but they do cause an inaccuracy for our calculated stress result. This inaccuracy is small as long as the inner diameter and the outer diameter are close to each other. In other words, the ratio between both is close to 1 which is considered to be true for so-called thin-walled piping. Typically a ratio of 0.9 is considered, so a pipe thickness that is 1 20th of the outer diameter. If the inner and outer diameter are not close to each other, in other words, if the pipe thickness is significant, our expressions are still conservative, but with high inaccuracy, and therefore lose their value. In conclusion, we have deduced equations for both the hoop stress and axial stress for thin walled piping. We recommend each professional working in piping disciplines to memorize these equations as they are very commonly used.